solve inequalities, you do it the same way that you solve equations. You just have to be careful with a few little things. So just like the last lesson, if I want to solve this, I'll use opposite operations and number properties to isolate variables. So I got a variable on each side. Remember, P by itself, the coefficient is an understood one. I'm going to subtract one P from both sides. so that I can get rid of this. 1p minus 1p is 0. And I can end up with balance, subtracting it from both sides. 4p's minus 1p is 3p's. Then also, simultaneously, I'm going to get rid of the minus 7 over here by adding 7. All right, minus 7 plus 7 will be 0. And I will add 7 over here to keep the equation balanced. So we have 3p is less than or equal to, keep that symbol, 87. Divide by 3 on both sides, we got, divide by 3 gets rid of times 3, p is less than or equal to, divide by 3 keeps balance, 29 believe. All right, P is less than or equal to 29. And then if I want to shade a number line to display this answer, I put my 29 on there. Some numbers around the 29. P is allowed to equal 29. So we have a closed circle at 29. And then P is allowed to be strictly less than 29. All right less than or equal to 29. There's one thing that we have to be careful of when we are undoing operations with an inequality, and it will occur in this problem. So I'll call your attention to it here. All right? But what's happening to H? We are subtracting 11, then multiplying by negative 5, then adding 6. All right, those are the three things we're doing to H. Minus 11 times negative 5 plus 6. I'm going to undo those things in the reverse order. So we will be subtracting 6, dividing by negative 5, and then adding 11 to isolate our variable. So subtract 6 to get rid of this and to keep balance. All right, we got negative 5, each minus 11 is less than 16. Okay, this is going to be the key step right here where something is different. I'm going to divide by negative 5. If I ever multiply or divide by a negative number, remember, Numbers count up away from zero in both directions. If I multiply by a negative number, I'm flipping over zero on the number line. And this symbol needs to turn around. The symbol needs to flip. So I'm going to divide by negative five. Because I'm dividing by negative five, I'm going to turn this symbol around. So it's no longer a less than, now it's a greater than symbol. All right, negative 5 divided by negative 5, 1 cancels out. H minus 11 is left. 16 divided by negative 5 is negative 3.2. Next move, add 11. Minus 11 plus 11 cancel. H bigger than 7.8. All right. If I want to show that on a number line, again, Let's 
put some numbers around it. I'm not allowed to equal 7.8, so I keep an open circle. I'm allowed to be bigger than 7.8, so I shade above. This right here is called a compound inequality. I'm saying that two things must be true. This must be less than 37, and this must be greater than or equal to 14. The way we deal with these is we solve both parts separately as if it's two problems. So add six to both sides. T is less than 43. Subtract 22 from both sides. Two t's are greater than or equal to negative eight. Divide by two on both sides. T is greater than or equal to negative four. Okay, I need this to be true and that to be true. So my final answer includes both. T is smaller than 43, but it's bigger than negative four. If I wanna show that on a number line, I show both of my key points. So negative four and 43. I also usually put zero on the number line. Zero is going to be a lot closer to negative four than it is to 43. All right. T must be smaller than 43. It's not allowed to equal 43. Less than. And it must be greater than negative four. It's allowed to equal negative four, greater than or equal to. So shade at negative four. Shade upwards. All right. And this is any compound inequality. It's allowed to be anything between there. It's not allowed to be outside of there. Those are the numbers that fulfill both of these requirements. They are smaller than 43 and they're bigger than negative four. The other kind of compound inequality that you could have to deal with is an or inequality. This can be true or that can be true. Again, solve each separately. I'm going to let you try that, hit pause, see if you can solve them separately, and then unpause and see what you got compared to what I have. Hopefully you came up with something close to this. U is less than negative 22, or U is bigger than 1. If I'm going to graph that on a number line, it will look like this. 0, 1. Negative 22. I'm not allowed to equal negative 22. So I put an open circle there. I'm not allowed to equal one. I put an open circle there. I am allowed to be smaller than negative 22. Or I'm allowed to be bigger than one. So there's two sections of values that fulfill that statement. 